What's up guys, welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be covering three great intermediate battle song tricks to get you started leveling up in your flipping. The tricks we're going to cover look like this. The short stop, behind the eight ball, and the Z choker. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a big thanks to my patrons. You all are the reason that I can make each one of these videos, so thank you. If you'd like to join my supporters like MachineWise and KMoney on the private community Discord, consider donating. Tiers start at just three bucks a month and every bit helps me reconstruct my past using a sort of VR slash deep simulation machine to go assassinate figures from my previous lives. For today's video, I'm gonna be using my Flatanium modded Kershaw Lucha, as I think its bright colors and large size will help you see what I'm doing. Okay, so this first trick is known as the short stop. This is a great opening that puts the knife into an ice pick grip in a very flashy way. Alongside this, it's also very useful as a way of breaking up combos by adding a nice little pause. To begin, you're going to hold the knife in a standard closed mechanics grip. You wanna make sure that you're holding with the bite handle facing your thumb. Now, grip the bite handle with your thumb and let the rest drop down while turning your hand outwards. From here, we're gonna do a vertical thumb rollover. What you want to do is place your middle finger under the bite handle and then twist the whole knife up and towards yourself with enough force so that you can get the safe handle to swing up and over your thumb. Now, this needs to all happen at once. Basically, once you let go of the bite handle, you want to pinch with your first two fingers and thumb. If you time it right, you will catch the safe handle easily. Watch. Ooh. This next part is a bit challenging. You wanna pinch the safe handle between your middle finger and thumb while getting your first finger out of the way. Then you're going to swing the knife over your middle finger. And as it begins to swing, you also wanna get your thumb out of the way. As it begins to swing, you wanna open your hand and get your thumb out of the way, letting the blade pass by before closing it again suddenly. Like that. If timed correctly, your thumb will return right after the blade swings by, stopping the knife short in its tracks. Whoop. Finally, just apply some pressure to snap the handles together and you're good to go. Now, if you can't get this move right off the bat, I suggest using this method to practice. Hold the safe handle between your thumb and middle finger like this with the blade facing away from you. This is how you'll be holding the knife halfway through the trick. From here, just try doing the last portion of the trick as many times as you need to until you can get the action down smoothly. One last thing, you can actually do this trick with either the bite handle or the safe handle to start. I wouldn't suggest starting at the safe handle, however, as by the end of the trick, you would be left with the bite side coming at your thumb. This could make for a much more messy mess up, so don't do it unless you're confident in your skills. Remember, this trick is made to work as one smooth motion, so you really wanna practice each part as much as possible until you can get it all in one go. Here, watch this slow-mo. As you can see, I let go of the bite handle and let the whole thing swing around my thumb. After catching the safe handle, I keep the momentum going in one smooth motion, sending the knife around my middle finger this time. From here, I pull away my thumb before bringing it right back and snapping the handles together. Next up is one of my favorite tricks, known as the behind the eight ball. This is an awesome momentum-based trick that I use literally all the time in my combos. The foundations this trick will teach you will help level up your flipping a lot. As you can see, first you spin it underhand around your first finger, then smoothly transition to your thumb, catching it on the other side before throwing it around once more and finally catching it open. Let's break this one down. To begin, you once again want to start in the standard mechanics grip with the safe handle towards your thumb this time. What you want to do is grip the safe handle with your thumb and let the rest swing out and around your hand. At the same time that you swing out the knife, you wanna move your first finger to the other side of the safe handle like this. <gasps> Once your finger is in position, you can swing the knife back towards it. This part is all about timing. Essentially, you want to start swinging the knife around your first finger and let go with your thumb. Your knife will swing around 180 degrees before you catch it again with the thumb. Basically, you're letting go for just a moment and then immediately returning to catch it. Whoop. It happens very quickly. Once it's caught, you're going to transition from the underside of your palm to over your hand. To do this, you make what is essentially an okay sign with your hand and then use your wrist to turn your hand up and throw the knife around your thumb. This is a little bit hard to explain, so watch this slow-mo. First, I rock the knife back 
holding the safe handle. Then you swing it around your first finger before catching it in the okay transition. Then finally, tilt your wrist up and let the knife swing around your thumb. Once it's swung around your thumb, catch it by grabbing the whole knife as it lands in your palm. Then you're going to turn your wrist down and in before turning it back up. This action will cause the knife to swing around your thumb again, this time with the blade on the outside. This swinging motion of your wrist is very important to learn and is similar to a wrist pass, so practice it until you can do it easily. A good way to practice this motion is to hold the knife in your hand in the ice pick grip. From there, drop one handle and do the wrist turning motion. Once done right, you should easily be able to throw the knife around your thumb and catch it closed. Start here, throw it around, just like that. It's all about that dip, it's like a dip, like a whoop, you know what I mean? To finish off the trick, use your whole hand to catch the bite handle as it comes around your thumb. Then make sure to use a wrist pass to keep the blade from cutting you while you continue the momentum. Finally, follow through the wrist pass and catch the knife open in your hand. This move is extremely useful and can be put into basically any combo or freestyle smoothly. I cannot tell you how much I've used this one in the past, so practice it often until it becomes second nature. Here, first I snap the knife back, holding onto it with my thumb on the safe handle. Then I swing it back, placing my first finger between the blade and the handle, letting it swing around. My thumb moves to catch it into the grip, and all at once I tilt my wrist back and bring the knife around my thumb. As it comes around, I catch the whole thing and twist my wrist again, this time throwing it around my thumb bite handle first. Lastly, I catch the bite handle and twist around once more in a wrist pass before catching it open. Last but not least is the Z Choker. Fucked it up. Last but not least is the Z Choker. This is an awesome and very cool looking trick that can add a lot of flair to your flipping. The Z Choker looks complicated, but is actually pretty self-working for most of the trick. To begin, hold the knife in the standard open grip with the safe handle facing your thumb. We're going to get into the starting position for this trick from here. To do this, hold the knife between your middle finger and thumb while pulling your ring finger around to the front part of the knife. Like that. From here, let go with your first finger and thumb and rotate the knife upside down using your ring and middle finger. Uh, like that. Finally, place your first finger back onto the back of the knife and you are now in position. It's your first finger and your ring finger on the back of the knife and your middle finger right there. You can get into this position multiple ways, but as long as you end up with your middle finger on the top and your ring and first finger on the bottom, you are good to go. Okay, so the next part will happen almost automatically. What I want you to do is drop the bite handle like that and twist your wrist inwards at the same time. As soon as you do this, you'll notice the knife wants to spin around a bunch by itself. Wow. As the knife spins, make sure you hold onto it with your first finger and middle finger. The only other thing you need to do here is rotate your wrist in the same direction as the spin to kind of help it along. If done correctly, you will end up here with the knife hanging between your first finger and middle finger. There's a few ways to end the trick from here. The simplest way to do this is to pull down with your middle finger, causing the knife to flip up and over your hand. Once you do this, use a wrist pass to keep the momentum going and snap it into an open grip. Whoop. You can do that any number of ways. You can do that. You can do that. So many things. Watch, first I move my ring finger to the front of the knife, and then I use it to rotate the knife upside down. Once I've gotten it into position, I release the bite handle and hold the safe handle between my first and middle finger, twisting my wrist. Now that I've got it here, all I have to do is use the leverage of my middle finger on the top to pull it down and around using a wrist pass at the end to snap it open. Now, this isn't the only way to finish off this move. What I usually do is a little more complicated, but is much more satisfying. The way to accomplish this is difficult to explain. Basically, the move is the same, but halfway through the twisting motion, you're gonna let go of the knife entirely. Once you let go, the knife will twist in the air a bit, and with the correct timing, you can grab it right out of the air into the ice pick grip. 
There really isn't much explainable technique here. It's all about timing. I suggest using a trainer at first to practice the move over and over before you move to a live blade. Like that. Here, check out this slow-mo. First, I get into position. Then I drop the handle and start the move. After one full rotation, I let go of the knife entirely and put my hand into the position to catch it. Finally, I snap my hand closed around the knife to catch it. Okay, so now that you've done all that, let's put it all together into one cool combo. Do you feel threatened? The combo looks like this. First off, start with a behind the eight ball, but instead of ending the move with a wrist pass, what you're going to do is go right into the short stop. Like that. To do this, we're going to rest the knife at the end of the eight ball move. To do a rest, you simply start a wrist pass, but then stop the momentum halfway through. So instead of going through the wrist pass, you're just gonna rest it like that. As you come to a stop, you'll notice that you are right in the starting position for the short stop. Boop. Now, we're gonna use another method to get into the Z choker position. To do this from the ice pick grip, bring your middle finger around to the front of the knife and then rotate it down once. Next, use your ring finger to rotate it down again. If you've done this properly, you'll find yourself right in the position for the Z choker. And then you just finish out the Z choker in whatever position you want and you'll have completed the combo. This is a great way to learn to string tricks together into a freestyle, so practice it a lot and try making your own variations. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. If you have any questions for me or any tips for people trying these tricks for the first time, please leave a comment down below. Once again, I just wanted to extend a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You all are the greatest and really make each one of these videos possible. If you'd like to join my supporters on the private community discord, consider donating. Tiers start at just three bucks a month and every bit helps support my private creed of time memory assassins. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.